Uh, dear colleagues, do you, do, you, do you see my screen? Yes, we see it. So please turn the full screen mode and uh, and start. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think you see my full screen and I will start. You see the title of my uh, presentation on the slide. Uh, just uh, do you see the first slide? What is economic complexity? Yes, yes, everything's okay, good. Okay, it means that scrolling is working. So first of all, what is economic complexity? You can read it on the slide. Uh, if a region or a country uh, is able to produce uh, uh, a lot of products which uh, only few other countries or regions uh, could produce, it means that uh, the economy of this region uh, is uh, complex. The opposite is also true if a country produces just simple products, which every other country or region, it depends on the object of analysis, could produce. It means that the economy of the uh, country uh, is uh, simple. So what, uh, uh, what does it mean? Complexity uh, related to the multiplicity of useful knowledge which uh, uh, companies uh, of the region uh, possess. So uh, now we will start, evaluate, in, my, in my report, I evaluate how this uh, bundle of knowledge influence on uh, indicators of the region development. For example, is GDP, GRP growth or its sustainability in economic crisis, about in, uh, how it influences on inequality, support, does it support innovation activity or not, and so on. So now you can see the research question. How, the, uh, how what is the impact of economic complexity on the regional economy, including its resilience to the economic crisis? Well, you know, I will be short how about my methodology and re some results of research. First of all, let's, let me uh, describe the methodology, how economic complexity indicator uh, is calculated. But first we compound matrix, region and product. Then uh, I just uh, a bit adapt uh, to a traditional methodology of Takela et Altri and calculated uh, such indicator, reveal comparative advantage. But I do, do not use the share of uh, country in total, country or region in total export of the product P. I calculated uh, value of product P produced in the region divided by number of employees in the manufacturing sector of the region R. Of the region R. Uh, by this, I, uh, re I reduced uh, um, the uh, influence of uh, the size of the region. So small regions, uh, well, big regions and very big regions are more or less in the same position. It's just a technical detail. Okay, then uh, we compare RCA with one. If, if, if it is bigger than one, we uh, insert in the second matrix one. If it's not bigger than one, we insert zero. So now we calculate the second matrix. And then we use the methodology of Takela et Altri, which is described in, in the, their paper. Uh, this is the system of uh, simultaneous equations, uh, iterative, I mean, uh, uh, system. And so we receive the, this uh, indicator fitness, which is economic complex, original economic complexity per C. I have stopped on 15. 15th uh, iteration, it's well enough, then results uh, uh, became quite stable. So uh, let me introduce you my research hypothesis. First of all, complexity, of course, should, imp uh, should uh, influence positively on innovation development. Uh, but uh, I propose inverted U shaped in correlation. So it's not a linear correlation, it's in non linear de uh, dependence between complexity and innovation. Uh, activity. I propose that in uh, that complexity does not have clear influence on investment growth because the uh, investments could uh, be directed as in uh, uh, technological industries, subsectors, sorry, and also at the same time uh, as the extractive sector. Uh, hypothesis, next hypothesis. Complexity, of course, should also influence positively economic growth, but I pr still propose inverted U shaped dependence. 
and I will later explain why. So the next group of hypotheses is uh, how economic complexity influences on uh, how, uh, sorry, economic complexity of neighboring regions influences on uh, regional indi uh, on indicators of development of the given region, of the focal region. Of course, I propose still a positive but non-linear dependence uh, of uh, economic complexity of neighboring regions on innovation indicators. Uh, it doesn't uh, influence on uh, um, investment because of the same reasons as I, as I told before. And the level of complexity of the economy of neighboring regions also have positive effect on indicators of economic growth and income. But this is still inverted U-shaped. Uh, it has an inverted U-shaped form. And the last, how it influences on crisis in a times of crisis. Well, you know, Russia, uh, as minimum, uh, were, uh, were, were the, uh, I mean, uh, be in situation or uh, was in situation of two crises. It uh, crisis, first crisis in 2006, is eight, and the second crisis in 2014. Now it's a third crisis. Maybe it will be fourth crisis. So economic complexity should increase sustainability of the regional economy during economic crisis. Well, uh, so let me uh, make uh, some uh, inferences. First. I will use a spatial autocorrelation model. It, uh, it explains why I'm talking about uh, influence of neighboring regions on uh, indicate social and economic indicators of the focal region. And the second, why I propose uh, uh, inverted on, oh, I'm sorry, why I propose U-shaped form of uh, influence of economic complexity. For example, let's look on uh, complexity and economic growth. If uh, economic complexity of uh, the region in, in increases, of course, it means that new opportunities of uh, new subsectors of growth are emerged in this region. But if uh, economic uh, economy of region be becomes too complex, it means that there are uh, problems with uh, cooperation with other region with other regions which are not so developed, technologically developed, arises. They rise because uh, there, there is no demand on the on high tech product in this country because other regions technologically underdeveloped. And so, in this case, I propose a non linear uh, dependence between economic complexity and uh, uh, economic growth, for example, of the region. Be Sorry, do you see me? Is it okay? Excuse me, is it fine? Yes, yes, everything's good. Oh, okay. Please, please go on. So, one conclusion. Uh, for the best result, economic of the re uh, complexity of the region should coincide to the complexities of the other regions. In this case, country works as a whole united system. In other case, uh, region will be under, uh, under will uh, be in situation of uh, the uh, too low uh, growth space or too high or too low growth space. Okay, so short uh, description of the data. Of course, I use the data of Rostat. I uh, take off 17 uh, regions because of missing data. And uh, I use the uh, SDM spatial Darwin model to check all hypotheses. Uh, I, I take uh, uh, and, uh, uh, independent variables and control variables with lack of three years uh, to, the uh, to the dependent variables. For example, I took uh, economic complexity for 2008 and uh, economic growth for the period 2011-2008. And weight matrix is the matrix of inverted distance by car between regions. I think it's more uh, uh, suitable matrix for Russia. Well, uh, this is the list of uh, dependent variables. Uh, these are three indicators of innovation activity, quite traditional, which are taken from statistics. This is the growth rate of investment in physical capital. This is the growth, ra growth rate of GRP, growth rate of GRP per capita, uh, growth rate of real disposable income, and uh, Gini coefficient which uh, characterizes inequality. 
Uh, this is independent variables of main interest economic complexity index. It's a square root. Sorry, this is misprint. Uh, this is a weighted index of regional economic complexity of other regions. And this is its square root. So this is for variables over uh, particular interest independent variables and some controls, which uh, I will not co comment them. Uh, they measure, for example, uh, share of inhabitants with high education, vocational education. So measure education, resource endowments of the region, uh, its ratio of GRP expenditures. Uh, sorry. Okay, just uh, when, because of internet problem, problems you can see there, uh, spatial Darwin model. I think some of you knows it, so maybe some of you not. So, well, I would like, I wanted to, to show you as a group of control variables, but I think you don't need because this is the variables to measure, for example, size of the region, its institutional environment and uh, some other stuff. So this is spatial development, spatial Darwin model, uh, which measures uh, uh, influence of development variables of other regions on development variable or on the independent variable of the focal region. This is uh, coefficients for uh, uh, independent and control variables of the focal region. This is in, uh, independent and control variables of other regions, if necessary. So it depends on the model specification. And uh, results for, se for several periods, let me uh, uh, let me uh, let me uh, communicate about it. So we we can see that uh, economic complexity of other regions influences on innovation activity, and this influence is uh, uh, as predicted. It has U-shaped form. Uh, here we can see that uh, hypothesis of group one almost uh, doesn't work in this regression because uh, there is no any dependence except for uh, growth of uh, real disposable income. Uh, the next, uh, due to some statistical uh, problems because uh, some methodology of calculation of some were changed in 2017, 2018, uh, I made uh, the second calculation, but for extended period and with some little amended some dependent variables. I will not comment on it because uh, it's uh, too technical details, but well, I repeat I repeated calculations. You can see, for example, that for uh, economic complexity of other regions, uh, dependence uh, still exists, but it became, became weaker, but it still exists and significant. Uh, we cannot say anything about uh, dependence of the influence of economic complexity of the focal region on its innovation activity because part 10 is different. Here is inverted U shape, here is a simple, uh, well, U shaped form. For GRP, it's predicted, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, for GRP growth, it is uh, influence of uh, economic complexity is as predicted, inverted U shaped form. But here, also as predicted in very shaped form. And here is two. So uh, concerning economic crisis periods, we still can see that the uh, economic complexity of uh, other regions uh, influence uh, has uh, influence is has U-shaped form on uh, innovation activity, but not for all variables. Uh, the, the same predicted results is for GRP per capita growth, for example. Here we can see that uh, influence is uh, as, uh, as predicted uh, in very shaped form, but not all variables are significant. So hypothesis three uh, about influence of economic crisis on, I mean, influence, influence of economic complexity of, on the development of regional economy during the economic crisis is confirmed. Um, uh, well, cri uh, crisis does not correct this influence. Maybe it became uh, it becomes even stronger, but uh, not became weaker or something like that. Not 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 be crisis do not change does not change this influence pattern of this, pattern of this influence. Well, the next, <clears throat> it's necessary to make detailed analysis of uh, uh, well how. Uh, 
economic complexity of neighboring regions influence on uh, dependent variables. And I, to make this analysis, I, uh, well, draw a graph where we can see uh, that this is indicators of economic complexity of other regions and its square form. And uh, here is innovation activity indicators. We have data, we have coefficients calculated by the model, we have uh, data on variables, so we could calculate this simple, uh, well, not equation, but, uh, her. So, okay, okay, simple, this simple equation. And so we can see, interesting result, that formally speaking, dependence between economic complexity of other regions and the innovation activity has inverted U-shaped form. And these uh, uh, coefficients are significant. But in reality, if we draw a graph for the whole, for, for, for the whole, uh, uh, well, data uh, on these variables, we can see that uh, dependence is not quadratic. It's nonlinear and decreasing. And we could calculate uh, of course, uh, uh, using the simple school uh, formula, the apex of parabola for uh, every case where uh, economic complexity or economic complexity for uh, other regions of neighboring regions is significant. And we can see that in every case where economic complexity of other regions is significant, uh, the dependence is strongly negative, non-linear and negative. So it's not quadratic, it's negative. It was, uh, so my, my uh, suggestions was not totally uh, true. Uh, I, I, I suppose that, for example, economic complexity of other regions could sometimes boost growth in the focal region. Uh, focal region. I made mistake. When economic complexity of other regions in Russian Federation grows, it immediately decreases in, I mean, influence negatively on uh, indicators of development in the focal region. It decreases its innovation activity, it decreases its economic growth, it, dec it uh, decreases income growth, and so on. And the next conclusion, which I must say, when economic complexity of the focal region is significant, you can see the apex of parabola. It, it, it could be positive or negative parabola, it doesn't matter, but you can see that apex is uh, something in the middle of the sample. And so the, my conclusion that uh, uh, this quadratic dependence between economic complexity of the focal region and its development is uh, true. It's not, you know, a, a accidental case when we, we have a small tail you understand what I'm talking, a small tail and uh, the whole dependency is, for example, positive or negative. No, it's uh, valuable, it's, uh, well, it's, it's parabola. It's parabola and, uh, well, it's, it's a usual parabola. It's not just a nonlinear form when, uh, when we talk about economic complexity and uh, of the focal region. So, and uh, some conclusions. First of all, Russian economy is cost-oriented. It, it could be confirmed by the dependence of, uh, for example, uh, independent variable of uh, uh, median uh, labor, uh, medium, uh, medium, uh, median salary, which is not contained in the tables, but believe me by word that Russian economy is cost-oriented and is confirmed by regression equations. Well, uh, economic complexity uh, influences on regions economy, but uh, these forces are only partially confirmed. Complexity does not affect its innovative activity. Influence on, on, on economic complexity on investments does not uh, is not significant, and uh, uh, influence on economic growth is significant and quadratically negative for, for some cases. I mean, only for economic growth, but not for social indicators. Group two hypothesis also partially confirmed investments uh, on, uh, uh, are not influenced by, by economic complexity. Uh, innovation indicators, uh, as we could see, depend on complexity of the economies of other regions and the uh, economic uh, growth indicators does not depend on the complexity of the economies of other regions. And hypothesis number three is confirmed. Economic crisis are, does not uh, change pattern of influence of economic complexity. Uh, 
does not change pattern of influence on economic complexity. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. I highly appreciate it. I waited for your questions. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Konstantin, yeah, yeah. thank you for your presentation. Uh, we, we want to make sure that all participants have the fair fraction of the time limit. So we, we would need to complete your part in five minutes. So we have time for one or two questions from, from the audience. There are some questions in the chat that uh, Konstantin, can you see them? You might stop uh, demonstrating the slides now and just look at, at the chat. Oh, I, I can read it for you. Well, just a moment. Uh, complexity is almost stages, more things can go or less reliability. Well, from the view, I don't understand this question. Uh, what does it mean more stages and more things can go over it? Uh, yeah. Konstantin, can you please turn closer to the microphone because now we hear uh, you worse. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, well, I can I can understand the question of Sergei Popov. Uh, he he is skeptical, but I don't understand why. Uh, more things can go. Uh, Sergei, are, are you here? Could you please comment? Okay. So there was a hypothesis three that said that when you have a more uh, difficult production process it's supposed to be more resilient i i don't think this assumption is that straightforward because i can give you an like an opposite problem like i how, how valuable is to formulate this hypothesis in this way i mean do you need to make strong assumptions like this i mean i understand that you know maybe you get the same thing in data but like <laughs> Why exactly this hypothesis is better than the opposite hypothesis? Well, uh, uh, if I understand correctly, the question is about uh, uh, influence of uh, economic complexity in crisis time. Well, um, this is uh, could be uh, 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 explained uh, uh, and analogically uh, as for uh, portfolio theory, because uh, if uh, a region's economy is more diversified. Of course, it could help it uh, to uh, overcome crisis because in crisis, uh, price, uh, prices even on uh, raw materials could fall and fall drastically than prices uh, more drastically, more drastic than prices on uh, manufactured goods. And so if the economy of um, the region is more diversified, if it produces uh, goods which uh, um, are rare on the world market or in the country market, uh, it, it, in this case, it has, uh, I mean, region has some market power and as a result could, over, uh, uh, could contradict to uh, negative crisis uh, 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 volatility. So when you say complexity, it's not about uh, production complexity, it's about diversification. Uh, yes, uh, I, mean, I mean, yes and no. Uh, com uh, well, to, to, if, if a country or region wants to have a, a complex economy, of course, it means that it must uh, be able to produce, to transfer, and to manufacture knowledge. So that, I mean, to uh, transform knowledge from knowledge to technology. But I don't, I, I don't mean that if this, is, uh, this is compulsorily um, uh, high-tech products. It could be just uh, good shoes, good cheese, uh, good furniture, good cars, and so on. But, uh, uh, well, when, when we talk about complexity, we talk simultaneously about diversification about and about technology, which is inside, which is, uh, which uh, support this diversification. But not necessarily about, about high-tech products. Konstantin, thank you very much for your presentation. I, I believe if there are any other questions, so I would uh, ask the colleagues to send them directly to you so you can discuss them 
one to one and we have to move on and now we give a floor to Evgeny Zimin. I see you you here and the presentation is titled Profitability and Bank Debranching in the Digital Age, Evidence from Russian Regions. So good afternoon, colleagues. Do you hear me? Do you see my slides? Y yes, yes, we hear and see you. Please start. So again, you have 15 minutes for the presentation and the, then we will have 15 minutes for the discussion. Oh, sorry, just a sec. Uh, okay, so good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Evgeny. Uh, I'm, the master, I'm the second year master student at the program Financial Economics and also I'm research assistant <clears throat> at the Center of Institutional Studies. And the, my research topics, as we, as we already said, profitability and bank branching in the digital age, evidence from Russian regions. So first of all, uh, let's, uh, let's consider what is uh, happening uh, with bank branches over the world. So in these uh, graphs, uh, in the left graph, you can see uh, the process of bank branching uh, in the United States. Uh, you see that this process accelerated uh, since uh, 2008. Uh, on the similar graph, on the right graph, you can see uh, what is happening with bank branches uh, across OECD countries. And you also uh, can notice that the number of bank branch, br uh, branches significantly declines. In Europe, it happens uh, since 1995. So uh, what's about Russian regions? Uh, here you see uh, the similar graphs uh, according to uh, you see similar graph about Russia. Uh, you see here you see the number of what is happening with the number of banks and with the number of bank branches. Here I should notice that uh, the um, uh, decline in the number of bank branches cannot be explained uh, due to the license withdrawal, since uh, uh, there is the point by Central Bank of Russia that uh, the banks whose licenses were revoked. Uh, as a rule, did not have many bank branches. So we need to uh, divide uh, the two processes, the uh, decline in the number of banks and the decline in the, num in the, num in the number of uh, bank branches. Uh, so you also can see that this topic are extensively discussed in use. And as a rule, the main reason why bank branches are closed over the world is that um, uh, due to technology, due to technology innovation. And so the uh, purpose of my research uh, is to explain how uh, bank branching in the Russian regions is associated with the bank profitability because uh, the main point is that the bank uh, closes, the, uh, the banks close their branches because they want to optimize the cost structure of uh, the branch network. But I wanted to test how, uh, I wanted to test this relationship given the uh, certain regions level of adoption of technological innovation in financial literacy. So what's the logic here? I suppose that if, uh, that if uh, uh, the Russian regions exhibit the sufficient levels of adoption of technological innovation, and if the region have uh, uh, the population that is uh, highly financial literate, then I can see that I can say that I suppose that uh, the bank the branching is uh, the bank the branching will be positively uh, associated with the bank profitability. And here you can see the two hypotheses that I'm going to test uh, during my work. The first hypothesis is about the uh, relationships uh, between technological innovation and higher financial literacy, uh, how these terms are associated with the bank branching. And the second hypothesis is related to the purpose of my research, how uh, technological innovation and how financial literacy of population uh, are connected with uh, the effect of bank branching on the bank profitability. So, a few words about uh, literature studies. Uh, the main uh, literature topic is of uh, Kayla of Angen in 2020. Uh, she, they uh, try to explain uh, branching decisions. And there are uh, four, uh, main branching, uh, uh, four main explanations why banks close their 
bank branches. As was, as I already said, it's of course internet and online banking. So the logic is straightforward, low demand for bank branches. So it, it becomes uh, unprofitable to uh, to have many bank branches on the balance of banks. But the second one is bank fragility because the banks are very exposed to micro cyclists, right? Uh, the third one is bank consolidation. It's the case when banks are consolidated and uh, the consolidated bank can have uh, a large overlapping branch network. So for this reason, uh, it should uh, decrease the number of bank branches. And the fourth the reason is, a, is just optimization of branch network when uh, uh, the bank sees that uh, it has many administrative costs and it needs to cut its costs. Uh, the second uh, study is of Carletti and, she, uh, and uh, the author proposes that uh, COVID-19 crisis uh, very accelerated the transition uh, from the bricks and mortar branch model to the mobile phone apps ecosystem. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide. Here I try to explain uh, the heterogeneity of Russian regions. So uh, my research is based on the sample of Russian regions, and we need to know that the Russian regions are not the same. They are heterogeneous. heterogeneous and now let's consider uh, in what terms they are heterogeneous. Uh, the first of all, it's of course uh, uh, internet infrastructure development. Here you can see the study of Nasonovs. So he constructed uh, his own index representing the ICT is just the um, geometric, geometric mean of such indicators of indicators such as uh, the number of organizations using the internet, the number of the percent usage of internet and household and so on and so forth. And here you can see the distribution of uh, ICT index across uh, the Russian regions and you can see the, that uh, the Russian regions in these terms are not uh, the same. Uh, also, there are some other heterogeneity terms, for example, there are heterogeneity in banking systems since uh, we have a large concentration of banks across the Russian regions. And also we need to admit that uh, the financial literacy of population across Russian regions also uh, differs. Okay, so this is my research methodology. So the first regression equation uh, represents uh, the first hypothesis here. I uh, 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 I expect to be delta one and delta two uh, to be positive signs, since uh, I am sure that uh, ICT, that uh, uh, internet connection or internet, um, so internet, uh, the adoption of technology innovations and financial literacy uh, should uh, be positively uh, be affected with the bank uh, branching. And so here you also see some. Uh, other parameters such as banks regions they are controlled for banking system in the regions and for uh, some regional characteristics since as already said the regions are heterogeneous, heterogeneous in these terms uh, this is the second regression equation this is uh, about the second hypothesis how uh, bank differentiation is associated with the uh, bank profitability uh, given the uh, regions uh, given the region's level of financial literacy of their population and uh, adoption of technology innovation. Uh, so here I also consider some uh, connection uh, terms uh, where you can see uh, the coefficients beta 4, for example, and beta 5. Uh, okay, this is uh, some references to uh, uh, references so where the dates are are uh, from uh, where the data were, were collected. So uh, I used the uh, government statistics and the uh, statistics of the central banks, uh, of Central Bank of Russia, uh, mostly. Uh, here are the uh, description of the panel structure. So the time period is from 2010 to 2018 on an annual basis. And I have 40, uh, 84 regions, except for Sevastopol due to uh, lack of data. And in total, I have about some 150 observations. Here are a few more words about how I constructed um, uh, index of ICT for the purposes of my research. So the index of ICT is a, should be proxy should be a proxy for measuring uh, the level of development of internet infrastructure in Russian regions. And so I uh, constructed this index. Uh, use, uh, using uh, PCA methods, not using the methods of geometric mean or arith arithmetic mean as uh, in studies. 
so and, and so this is method, this methodology was proposed by United Nations International Telecommunication Union, and I included the following set of indicators. Uh, these are ICT costs of the regional budget, the number of the percent of organizations that use um, broadband internet access, and then total number of organizations, number of personal computers and organizations, and some other uh, technical uh, indicators uh, representing the development of ICT in Russian regions. I uh, hear uh, about, so this slide is about financial literacy and how I measure it. So. The point is that uh, I mentioned here uh, that I used the uh, Human Development Index. It was the proxy for financial literacy. Uh, so HDI is the composition of three indices, such as uh, life expectancy, uh, knowledge, and decent standard of living. Of course, this, is, this indicator is very broad, and it represents not only the financial literacy, but uh, some issues connected with the uh, socioeconomic development of Russian region, because he, it measures uh, the decent standard of living through gross national income index per capita. But uh, I think the, the, the rationale why I use this uh, proxy for financial literacy is that there are some studies, for example, from Zavatska uh, that argues that uh, human development index and financial literacy are highly correlated. And for this reason, I use the HDI as a proxy for financial literacy. But of course, uh, the collection procedure should be improved in order to measure only the effect of financial literacy or, or uh, at least the uh, knowledge of the uh, the education of uh, people in certain Russian regions. Of course, uh, there are another proxies that I can use for measuring financial literacy. For example, uh, there are some uh, surveys uh, from NAFI Research Center. For example, uh, it's uh, so in 2018 they conducted this survey uh, where they ranked all the Russian regions across to the level of financial literacy. But uh, this survey was conducted only for 2018, and so I cannot observe the uh, variation across the Russian regions uh, uh, over the time period uh, of my interest. Uh, so it's about the financial literacy. Uh, some authors, for example, Nasonov, when he constructed the ICT, supposed that the level of financial literacy across the regions is not much different. So the, uh, the um, variation uh, in terms of financial literacy across from Russian regions may be insignificant, but uh, nevertheless, I think we should uh, consider financial literacy uh, as a, as a um, separate parameter. Here are the results for my first regression. Uh, here are two specifications. They are different uh, in terms that in second regression, I use uh, time fixed effects. So I use uh, the random effects uh, model since the due to the, host, the result of Hausmann test. And here uh, we we indeed can see that uh, the internet technology in Russian re in the Russian region and the level of literacy measured through a sign is negative, representing the that the fact that uh, the higher level of internet technology and, fin and financial literacy associated with decrease in the number of bank branches as well already as we expected uh, to see. Uh, now, these are results for the second regression, um, and where I try to measure the impact of uh, bank branching on the uh, bank profitability given the certain level of ICT and uh, this uh, and the certain level of financial literacy. Uh, here uh, there are some uh, significant results that uh, might be that might seem to be very counterintuitive. For example, in the fourth specification, this is a random effect model including interaction terms and uh, Time fixed effects, we see that uh, the bank debranching uh, is indeed uh, 
positively associated with uh, bank profitability. But for example, if we consider the uh, interaction term, uh, uh, LD branches, HDI, this is interaction term, just multiplication of HDI and the uh, delta uh, branches, we can see the negative sign that uh, uh, seems to be very con uh, contraintuitive because uh, it means that the higher level of uh, HDI, uh, then the lower relationship between the uh, bank uh, the branching and bank profitability. But uh, the possible explanation here uh, is uh, might be that uh, there were some uh, there were some problems with collecting data on bank profitability uh, because uh, the central bank of Russia. Uh, does not uh, provide the data on banks and bank branches uh, depending on the uh, place, depending on the actual place where we can find them. Uh, the statistics of a central bank are on the basis of registration of banks. And for this reason, for example, if we see some bank branches of uh, Sberbank and Russian Ridge Bank, we see that uh, the Sberbank is uh, concentrated in Moscow region. And for, uh, and for this reason, it might significantly uh, distort my results uh, in the second regression equation. OK, let's, to, let's turn to the conclusion of my presentation. Um, uh, this slide. Uh, highlights the main findings and limitations of my study. So the main findings are that uh, indeed the higher ICT development in Russian regions and the higher level of financial literacy are associated with a higher rate of bank branching. And uh, these uh, might be uh, drivers for uh, management of a banks, so why they should or they should not uh, close their bank branches. Regions. So they should consider infrastructure in this region and the level of financial population. And the second finding is that uh, uh, we found that higher uh, ICT development in the Russian regions is indeed uh, and two limitations of, of my study that uh, uh, I'm going to solve uh, during my uh, second year. And uh, I think that. Uh, I improved this research, uh, and this will be resulted in the in my uh, master's dissertation uh, this year. So the limitation first is that HDI is a proxy for financial literacy. So as I already said, it's broken. Maybe there is some uh, I should use some uh, more uh, narrow uh, proxies, such as years of schooling, for example, or the number of universities in such regions, and so on. Uh, and the first and the second limitation is that. As already said, data on bank profitability depends on actual location uh, of banks. So I think that's all. Uh, thank you for listening to me attentively. I will be glad to answer the questions and get some feedback, get some ideas how I can improve my work. Thank you. Jenny, if I can, I just have a... Mm -hmm. uh, the question it was difficult to me to follow you uh, for all the presentation because sometimes uh, your voice was not uh, very clear because of the internet connection but mm -hmm. i do have a general question or somehow a policy question what is the policy implication for from your analysis would you uh, uh, sorry some, could you, what is policy could you draw uh, some policy implication for you from your analysis? Ah, you mean how my results can be duplicated, uh, for example? How, it, into... how your result could be used uh, mm -hmm. uh, for policy, so for a policymaker. Mm -hmm. uh, for what example, you, what you what a policymaker would uh, take away from your results? Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, one, uh, one of my uh, uh, main results is the role of financial literacy. So I, I, this is another justification why uh, 
uh, financial literacy, for example, uh, should be considered as an institutional factor. And so this is uh, additional justification why we need to increase the level of financial literacy. So it is the justification for the Central Bank of Russia. Uh, so that uh, we need to increase the level in order to uh, lead uh, to the, so the higher level of financial literacy are associated to the bank branching. And for this reason, uh, people are, uh, so that's fact. So they uh, improve the financial literacy. The higher ICT development also is connected with the bank branching, as we already see in the results. Just for justification, maybe I don't know. Does it answer your question? Do you yes. hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I can hear you. And uh, I think uh, uh, you should think how to um how to make your policy uh, your sorry how to make your uh, research question uh on this uh, following also this possible policy implication so uh, maybe you can uh, you can integrate your research question uh with a, a policy implication with the question related to policy implication yeah. thank you Okay, thank you. Evgeny, we have a suggestion for you. So maybe now everyone who has a feedback and, and, or questions will, uh, will say them. So you will have more feedback received. And after that, you will answer them. Okay, so uh, now we have a question from Nick. Um, right, very quickly and related to Paolo's point about policy implications. Uh, uh, well, why do we care about the number of bank branches, right? So why should we care about this as an outcome variable? And if we should care about this as an outcome variable, um, surely the local demand for banking services is one of the determinants of the number of bank branches. So, uh, and I didn't see it in your specification, maybe I missed something. So these are the two most burning questions that I have. Thank you. Uh, so the first question is why we care about uh, the process of bank branching. Uh, so I, Evgeny, Evgeny, let's collect all the questions together. So you will have more the feedback and you will have more opportunity to improve your research because we have multiple questions to fill in in a short limit, time limit. Okay. okay, okay. Thanks. First, I'd like to state that everybody okay, believes it's an important okay. question because everybody wants to ask questions. So congratulations with our like, good topic selected. Uh, I also have uh, probably more comments and questions. You're looking at the change on our financial uh, uh, literacy, mm -hmm. but what have also changed during the period is the bank technologies in the sense that you can now do more things online so it's not that just issue of literacy it's just the issue of technology you can now like download many papers many numbers etc and without not going to the branch so there's less demand for branching and also in like previous times uh, every consumer of some particular bank was attached to some branch so to do anything with your bank account, you need to go to some particular branch. Now, and that's again the issue of technology, you can go to any branch because they don't have any papers, they just have everything in computers. So that's also decreases the demand for branching. So I would try probably to explain in your paper more why you believe that the issue of literacy uh, mostly but not other issues like uh, changes in technology during this period, or try somehow to control for that. Thank you. But again, congratulations with interesting topic. Thanks. Yeah, um, my question is also related to to Nick's and Paola's. Uh, I was wondering how the regional market structure could affect the branching because in most in, in many small regions there are maybe two or three large banks uh, which are basically dominate the market 
and uh, the debranching strategy would largely depend on what others do. So uh, I think you should also control for uh, for uh, market concentration index as well in your specifications. Thank you. A tiny comment. I, I'm interested. Why did you take into account only financial literacy, but you didn't uh, um, work with, for example, digital literacy of people who live in some specific regions? Because financial literacy can describe, at least in my opinion, like general knowledge on how to use some financial um, products. But at the same time, I think it will be also very interesting how other people use. Uh, computers and internet and technologies so and um, unfortunately during your presentation i couldn't find uh, this data but i found that uh, there are some indexes that estimate digital uh, literacy and maybe you can take this information into account yep thank you yeah i, I would also add a little bit to Anna's point. So, uh, as we understand financial literacy, it's not just being able to like borrow money from the bank online or via the cell phone. So, it might be the more financially literal uh, way to visit the branch when you do something there. So, it's more. It, it's no. It's not certain, and you might either to uh, uh, change the uh, variables you use or provide better justification why it is financial literacy, not just digital literacy that affects the uh, debranching. In, uh, now you've gained, you, know, you, you might choose the questions you want to answer because there are many and you have you have four minutes to to provide some thoughts I think he has problems with connection. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately. Uh, sorry, a very bad, uh, a very bad internet connection hostel. So about bank branching, uh, because uh, so in order to for Russian banks to follow the competency with uh, foreign banks that uh, uh, decline the number of bank branches because they cut their administrative costs. We need to uh, increase the level of uh, internet infrastructure development in Russian regions and to increase the level of financial literacy in order to, uh, for, in order to, it, it, so that's, uh, so our, our, our banks also could uh, decline the number of their bank branches to increase their profitability and to be able to compete with uh, foreign banks. Uh, so I think this is the case. Uh, also, the uh, so yeah about, about market concentration. I'm planning to use, uh, for example, Hirschwindel index um, to include the, this uh, indicator for controlling for uh, regional market concentration of banks also thank you for the um, uh, thank you for mentioning digital literacy i think yeah i should also consider this as a part of uh, ict development of russian of uh, ict development of russian regions in financial literacy and maybe include as the uh, third uh, indicator so thank you for the very fruitful comments I think my time is over. Yeah, thank you, Zip. Uh, th thank you, Evgeny, for the great timing. So we, we are very accurate here. And the next presenter is Anna Zhigalina here. Yes, nice to see. Nice. 
Your presentation is titled The Impact of University Quality Characteristics on Russian Graduate Salaries on Initial Career Stage. Please launch the presentation and the floor is yours. Second, can you tell me, please, can you see the screen? Yes, yes, we can see it, but maybe you move closer to the microphone so we, we hear you better. Uh, it's better? No, not. Y yes, yes, we, we can hear. I, I'll try to, uh, to speak uh, louder. <laughs> so um, let's start. Uh, good, um, good morning, everyone. Today I'll tell you about my work, the impact of university quality characteristics on Russian graduate salaries on initial career stage. And in the beginning I'll tell you a little about the topic, so about the higher education in general. Then we will discuss the results of my literature review, methods, results and conclusion. Uh, so, um, the, uh, the main purpose of my work uh, was to study the award uh, that graduates of high quality universities receive and compare this return using different uh, university quality measurements. And so let's uh, start discussing the theme in general. Uh, higher education uh, is an important focus of state policy, which contributes to the development of the whole society. And the researchers know that the proportion of people who have a higher education uh, has greatly increased compared to the Soviet Union. The supply has grown and the demand. And now, according to the statistics, about 80% of high school graduates are going to go to the universities. Uh, so uh, this is a large proportion of people who receive a higher education, and this phenomenon uh, in the literature is called a massification of higher, of higher education. And uh, in such situation, the role of um, qual university quality increases, so it means that it's more important in which university uh, person received his or her higher education. Uh, now let's briefly discuss the results. So in my work, I... Uh, uh, discuss about 90 um, articles and I divide them into three groups according to the methodology. The first one, uh, the first group, I mean, relate to or less regressions and observable characteristics. The second one relates to RDD analysis and IV approach. And the second and the last one uh, relates to combination of more complex methods and uh, creation of something new. And as a result of this analysis, I um, realized that there is uh, a novelty of my work. So um, uh, um, the novelty is the fact that I use a wider pool of university quality measurements and uh, um, I test instrumental variables. So uh, I um, provide analysis of papers uh, with instrumental variables, then I choose some kind of instruments and test them in Russian reality. Uh, I use a new Russian database that hasn't been used before. And uh, I observe large period after graduation. So I look uh, at um, not only a short period of time after the graduation of students, but uh, for more large period. So let's closely discuss the sample. So I use uh, Hesea LMS database and combine this database uh, with monitoring university effectiveness database. Uh, it's important that um, the monitoring university effectiveness measurements uh, were collected by hand from the site and then uh, the complex process of combining these two databases um, was done. And as a result, we have a sample. So uh, for clarity, this slide shows the process of combination, these two samples with restrictions. And um, let's discuss the hypothesis. So the first one relates to university quality um, return, and we suppose that it will be positive and statistically significant. The second uh, hypothesis relates to IV estimations. So we suppose that according to the theory, IV estimations will be less than or less coefficients. Uh, due to this bias uh, that uh, this problem will be solved with IV estimations. Um, the uh, third hypothesis is about um, different measurements. So we suppose that different university quality characteristics will give us different measurements and uh, the highest return we will uh, give from um, the average UC score of university. And the last hypothesis um, 
is about theory so as you know university quality um, can university quality quality return can be explained by human capital theory or um, uh, signal theory by uh, Spence and we suppose that university quality is an element of human capital so it won't decrease or won't decrease significantly over time uh, so let's discuss the model I use an internal equation and uh, dependable variable logarithm of the wages and other factors such as quality, demi for gender, gender, educational form of studies, uh, week working hours, dummy for region uh, for working during the study, work industry, and person's age. And as methods, I use OLS regression, instrumental variable approach, and Heckman correction. So on the slide, you can see uh, at the right. Um, big groups of these factors and we decided to use uh, more detailed uh, measurements from these groups and you can see them at the left uh, and on the slide you can see the uh, descriptive analysis and some summary results about mean wage and something like that but we will discuss the main results uh, later and now let's look um, deeper uh, into these factors so you can see that we use um, these factors and they can combine into some groups. The first group relates to average UC score of university. I want to highlight that this average UC score is for university, not for person, because we don't have such data for um, Russian labor market, unfortunately. So we work with average UC score for university. And we have two measurements. The first one is about the average UC score. The second one is about the average UC score without uh, people with special rights. Uh, also, we have uh, indicator of citations of publications. Moreover, we have um, some measurements related to foreign activities and foreign students, foreign professors. So it's about the communication, collaboration with other foreign um, universities. Also, we have some financial indicators related to average salary compared to the salary in the region and um, uh, also income of an educational organization. And also we have some um, equipment um, indicators like personal computers per students and um, areas for studying in the university. And now let's look at the results. So for each factor, um, there will be um, carried an OLS regression and Heckman correction, and you can see them on the slide. So as you see, um, there is no such big difference between uh, OLS regression and Heckman correction, correction coefficients. And from these results, we can conclude that the, our first hypothesis is true. So we receive uh, positive and statistically significant um, impact. Uh, and moreover, uh, um, from this table and from the next table, we can conclude that another hypothesis is true. So we can see that um, there is really different measurements according to the factor we used to measure the university quality. And we can see that uh, when we use uh, the average UC score for university, so we uh, get the highest um, return compared to other factors. Uh, on this slide, you can see the general model. So, um, moreover, I compare not only the uh, measurements like these factors, but also I divide universities by quantiles using different uh, factors. For example, for the factor, the average UC score, we use this factor uh, in the regression. And moreover, I uh, divide university universities for quantiles and also analyze this premium uh, I mean premium for the first, second, and third uh, quantile compared to the fourth quantile, so the reference group. And also you can see other coefficients related to um, other factors. Uh, now let's talk a little bit more about instruments. So um, instrumental variable approach, it's uh, some kind, it's a controversial uh, issue because it's really difficult to find um, appropriate instrument. And we decided to uh, analyze instruments which were used in uh, uh, previous articles. And we decided to test these uh, instruments in Russian reality and um, using this uh, data. 
so I combine uh, articles with instrumental variables into three groups. The first one relates to distance between university and living place. The second one relates to discount rate. And the last one relates to birth, so like birth quantile, birth months, uh, something like that. And according to these instrumental variables, we uh, choose instrumental variables to test them. And as a result, um, the slide, on the slide you can see uh, the return on the university quality with uh, instrumental variable approach. And you can see that um, so our hypothesis is true. So IV estimations are less than or less coefficients. However, uh, I provide Hausman test to understand if uh, these instruments are uh, effective to use or we should use, for example, OLS regression. And as a result, we um, uh, we will get that uh, we get that uh, these instruments are weak. So we don't recommend to use them in regressions uh, because. Um, we suppose that it will be more effective to use uh, OLS uh, regression instead. And uh, the last result, but uh, very important too, uh, it's about the return compared, um, compared with different period of time after graduation. So we decide to look at um, three years after graduation, four, five, six, and seven. And we compare this return. So you can see this factor, um, I-11, it's about the average UC score, our general model. And you can see that uh, if we increase this factor at 10 points, so the return is about um, uh, eight or 10%. And it, uh, it, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't decrease over time. So um, it's a very important result, we suppose, because we can, um, we can say that it relates to human capital theory because if uh, university quality is a part of uh, is a signal, so uh, we suppose that at the beginning of career stage of students, uh, the impact will be uh, the highest and then it will decrease. Uh, however, we uh, don't see such effect and maybe it's a result of the fact that it's a part of human capital instead of uh, signal theory. So now let's briefly discuss the whole results. Uh, so the first one is that we'll, uh, we, we get a positive return. Uh, so university quality uh, has uh, a positive uh, impact on the uh, wages of graduates. Moreover, we have different uh, impacts according to different factors and the highest impact is related to the average UC score and it can be explained by the fact that the average UC score it's not only about the university quality but it's also about the demand from the society, it's about the estimation of the uh, university by the society and something like that. Uh, so financial factors, they are um, statistically significant. However, um, their impact is closely to close to zero and other factors gives us no significant effect. Uh, moreover, according to the theory, our IV estimations are less than OLS coefficients. However, as I've mentioned before, these instruments are weak. And um, I mean, these instruments which were used in previous articles in different um, situations, uh, but we don't recommend them, uh, don't recommend to use them according to uh, this Russian database. And also uh, we get that uh, return uh, don't change, uh, doesn't change significantly uh, after the graduation of the students. So um, it's the end of my speech. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I'd be glad to answer your questions. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Let's use the same strategy. So now we will listen to the questions of, of, of our participants. So you will receive a lot of feedback. I see there are many people who want to ask something. Thank you. Uh, wow, very interesting study. Really, really like it. Um, so I have a big question and a small question. So my big question is uh, about policy implications. Should we or should you try to sell these results as a, as a case for increasing the tuition fees at privileged universities? 
or should you uh, sell this as a case for increasing subsidies to increase the, the measures, the increase the quality measures of prestigious universities or you know any any universities whatsoever? So of course there's a world of difference between these two policy implications, and the question is how if you can uh, say something informative about which uh, which which uh, selling strategy for your results you want to develop. Now, if uh, there is a case for subsidies to help universities raise capacity to uh, improve their quality, there needs to be positive externality for education. And hence, my very specific question uh, uh, is, is it possible to learn from your results about positive, external positive externalities from um, uh, higher quality? of uh, university education. So the wage increase is, is all well and good. People earn more money, that's private benefit. Are there any public benefits from going to a better university? Like for example, lower unemployment rate or a lower likelihood of, uh, uh, of, uh, of drawing on the state social security. So should the state help universities improve their quality through uh, building these expensive facilities that you measure in your university quality index. So that's the big question I have. And the small question is, um, there are lots of stars in your regression results and instinctively I'm very skeptical about lots of stars in the regression results. So uh, um, um, I wonder if you cluster in your regression analysis, if you cluster the regression errors by university. I think you should cluster your regression errors by university because the key measures in your regression analysis are defined at the university rather than the individual level. Thank you. Uh, I also have. Um some questions and some comments. I'll probably start from the questions. Thank you very much. It's it's indeed a very interesting um, topic and a very good study. Uh, my question would be, um, did you control, I haven't, I haven't seen it in your uh, tables, but did you control for the region? Because um, it might be the case that the quality universities are located um, in some specific cities or specific regions like Moscow or St. Petersburg. And um, they might have higher access to top employers. So it means that top employers are more inclined to hire graduates from specific universities and it might lead to some um, biased estimations. Um, and also talking about the, um, I also had some questions about the, um, yeah, about what is uh, quality university, but I think that you have explained this um, in your presentation. I'm, I'm wondering a little bit about the, um, the Unified State Exams course, because, well, you mentioned that uh, the um, they well, they contribute on institutional characteristics of quality, but in my opinion, what is also um, interesting maybe to uh, analyze it from the perspective of individual characteristics, because, well, of course, uh, education is important, but also there are some uh, unobservable individual characteristics that might also um, um, uh, influence the, um, the wage of the graduates. Uh, and my last question slash comment would be about your theoretical contribution. So in the beginning, you mentioned uh, um, human capital theory and signaling theory, but I haven't really captured what would be the contribution of your study uh, in relation to either of those theories or um, to each uh, to both theories and uh, theories. And have you maybe uh, developed something, uh, some extension of those theories in your study? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for a very interesting presentation and uh, ideas. I also have probably a partly question, partly comment. Uh, you use uh, unified state exam data as a signal of quality. Actually, everybody does that. But uh, uh, you probably should spend a little bit more time and effort explaining why you can do that. Imagine, for example, a restaurant 
and you want to measure the, want to measure the quality of food there, um, the quality of restaurant, but instead of measuring the quality of food, you measure the quality of people who enter the restaurant, right? Can you say that there is like 100% uh, correlation between who enters the restaurant and the quality of food? Probably not. Probably those people are just mistaken. Like, nice, nice building, nice advertisement, etc. So, which means that you can definitely say that it's a prestigious restaurant, but not probably a good one. So here also in your presentation, you also somehow confuse between uh, high quality education and prestigious education. And you should be very careful explaining what you're really talking about and justify your use of words. Um, again, it's not a critique of the variable you use because like everybody does that. And, uh, but you should be more confident in explaining why you believe it's a measure of something. Thanks. There is also a question in the chat from Ricardo, and no, I also have a minor suggestion, maybe avenue for, for the continuation of your project. What might be useful for us in the marketing of our education in in the one case of your finding, or might be thing to uh, to reflect on. So, uh, would be interesting to the, to compare the premium in salary people receive after graduating from the good university with the fee they have to pay studying there. So, does there any are there any return on investment? And if there is, we can. We can use it in our marketing strategy. Yes, saying that even if you pay pay tuition fee studying here, you will have a return in a several years upon graduation. So it it might have very straightforward uh, application. And no, indeed, the results are already quite interesting and solid. And so thank you for a very nice presentation. Ricardo, I see you about to, to say something. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, I'm not really an expert of this particular literature, so uh, it's just a simple econometric uh, observation that is that, uh, well, if you fail the Hausmann test, uh, it does not necessarily mean that you should prefer the OLS. Uh, it, could, uh, it could be that you just need the different instruments. And so I would be a bit more cautious when you comment on this result uh, in your paper, just that. Uh... Yeah, so, uh, and you received multiple questions, so again, you have an opportunity to choose what, what, which of them you are ready to answer right now, which of them are something to reflect on. So please, your your remarks. Okay, thank you for your questions and comments. It's really interesting. So I want to start with um, my comments about instrumental variable approach. So when I use it, um, the main aim was to like um, to cope to deal with indigenity problem in some ways, and I decided to um, make a research uh, from uh, articles with instrumental variable approach, and then I realized that these instruments are weak according to Russian reality because they, of course, they have some minuses, and. Um, uh, the main result of my work is that these instruments are weak and I don't recommend to use them in Russian articles, so I don't. Um, like highlight the idea that it's necessary to use or less regression. Of course, um, maybe in the future, more uh, effective, more valid instruments will be um, approved. Uh, however, now I don't, um, unfortunately, I didn't find these instruments and this is my result. So talking about the region, uh, of course, um, I have uh, this dummy variable for region in my model. So of course I control the regional effect because I understand that the wages can be different according to the place where a person live. Um, about the, um, about the human capital theory and signal model. So um, I decided to um, 
improve my research, um, as you've seen before, using one hypothesis related to um, this return. So I uh, suppose that if we have um, don't uh, if we had uh, the impact which won't decrease over time, so it's about human capital, and this is in it's one of the results that I receive in my paper. Uh, so um, and talking uh, about uh, UC score, so I use uh, other factors. Uh, the main one of the main aim of my paper is to. Uh, show different university measurements and compare them. So uh, that's why I use UC score, like the most um, mm, the most widely used in different papers. And I compare it with different measurement uh, indicators like financial factors and something like that, equipment factors, and I give this result. And talking about policy implications and return in investments, it's really interesting improvement. Thank you so much. Um, I uh, maybe I'll add it in my research. Um, thank you for your comments. Yeah, then, uh, thank you again, Anna. Now we have a break of fifteen minutes, and then we at twelve forty in Moscow time we we continue with the presentation of Anastasia Bovalsova. So now short break.